Hi, I'm Doug Jensen with Vortex Media, and I've been producing independent training DVDs and field guides for Sony camcorders since 2005. In this new series of short videos called XD Cam Essentials, Sony and I are going to be teaming up on a regular basis to bring you the latest information about their camcorders, and more importantly, to show you how to use the many powerful features and functions that they offer. You know, I've been shooting exclusively with XD Cam since 2006, and you couldn't pay me to use anything else. Not only do Sony's cameras have exceptional picture quality, but they also offer many unique features, special functions, and workflow advantages that you won't be able to fully appreciate until you start using them for yourself. And then, they'll become almost impossible to live without. And that's really the idea behind this new video series. First, to help you better understand what makes Sony camcorders so impressive, and second, to show you step-by-step -step how to utilize their unique features and functions to work faster, more efficiently, and produce better quality images. So, whether you already own a Sony camcorder or you just want to learn more about them, Sony and I invite you to tune into each new episode of XD Cam Essentials. In this first episode, I want to introduce you to Sony's three new Handycams that each offer 50 megabits per second, 422 recording modes, and four channels of audio. These new cameras are the PMW100, the PMW160, and the PMW200. We'll take a look at what they have in common, how they differ from each other, and what makes them better than their predecessors. Let's begin with what they have in common. First of all, they're all part of the XDCam family, and as I said before, that automatically puts them in a totally different league than every non-XDCam camera. For instance, all three of the new models offer time-lapse, slow motion, shot marks, customizable picture profiles with very sophisticated paint menu settings, custom clip naming, one-touch clip review, last clip delete, a picture cache buffer, slow shutter, optical steady shot, expanded focus, camera data files, full auto modes, time code in and out connections, customizable zebra and peaking displays, assign buttons, 10-bit SDI output, dual SBS memory card slots, 12-volt power, a built-in stereo microphone, XLR audio connectors, full compatibility with all the major nonlinear editing software programs, and much more. One of the many hidden benefits of mastering any of Sony's small XDCam camcorders is that the menu system and other functions are nearly identical from one camera to the next. So in other words, if you learn to use the entry-level PMW100, you could pick up a top-of-the-line PMW F3 and feel right at home in no time at all. So what are the differences among these three new cameras? Well, probably the most important one is the image sensor that captures the incoming light and turns it into a high-definition video signal. The PMW200 features three half-inch XMOR CMOS sensors, which are the same great sensors that the PMW EX1R uses, but the PMW200 has improved image processing, so the picture quality is better than ever. The PMW160 also uses three CMOS sensors, but in this camera, they're only one-third inch in size. And finally, the PMW100 uses the same one-third inch sensor as the PMW160, but instead of three, there's only one. Why have different sensor configurations? Well, for the same reason some models of cars offer different engine choices depending on how much performance the driver needs. Not everyone needs the full-blown image quality and high-end specifications of the PMW 200. So the 160 and the 100 provide a couple of budget-minded options to choose from. Compared to 1 inch sensors, the half-inch sensors of the PMW 200 provide better resolution, better low-light capability, less noise, and better ability to obtain shallow depth of field. But make no mistake, unlike Sony's PMW F3 and other camcorders with super 35mm size sensors, these new cameras are not intended for shooting situations where the look of shallow depth of field is the number one priority. But that's a good thing. Smaller sensor cameras like the PMW 100, 160, and 200 offer some real advantages in terms of size, convenience, versatility, and ease of use. The next most significant difference among the cameras is their lenses. The PMW200 basically has the same excellent Fujinon lens that has proven to be an all-around workhorse on the EX1R. It has a 14x zoom and three independent rings for aperture, zoom, and focus, with hard stops at each end of the range. The PMW160 features an excellent 20x zoom lens that also produces phenomenal images. 
Once again, there are three separate rings for aperture, zoom, and focus, but unlike the 200, there are no hard stops when you reach the limits. And finally, the PMW100 has a smaller 10x zoom lens with a single ring that can be switched to control zoom or focus, but not both at the same time. And exposure is controlled with a small dial on the side of the camera body. Speaking of exposure, here's another difference among the cameras. The PMW200 has two built-in neutral density filters, plus clear, for controlling how much light comes into the camera. And the PMW160 has three ND filters, plus clear. But the PMW100 doesn't have any built-in ND filters, which means you may have to use traditional ND filters on the front of the lens, or maybe a variable ND polarizer when you're shooting outdoors in bright conditions. Another advantage that the PMW160 and 200 have over the 100 is the ability to control the camera remotely via Wi-Fi from iPads, iPhones, and most Android mobile devices. By attaching an optional Wi-Fi adapter, you can control zoom, focus, iris, and white balance, as well as start and stop the recording. This option will cost an extra couple hundred bucks and won't be released until a little later in 2012, so I haven't tried it yet myself, but I certainly look forward to it. Now, even though the PMW100 doesn't offer the Wi-Fi option, it does have something no other xd -cam camcorder has, and that is a special shooting mode called Night Shot that allows you to shoot in extremely low light conditions. Now, obviously Night Shot has a unique look to it and may not be something you'd want to use every day, but for the right situation, it's a great tool to have on board the camera. In an upcoming episode of xd -cam Essentials, we'll cover Night Shot, Slow Shutter, and other low light shooting techniques in more detail. Although all three cameras share the exact same beautiful flip-out LCD screen, which by the way has 30% higher resolution than any previous xd -cam camcorder, when it comes to the viewfinder at the rear of the camera, the screen on the 200 and 160 is bigger and has four and a half times more resolution than the viewfinder on the 100, and that will make a big difference when it comes to focusing the lens manually. Well, that's about it for the major differences among the three camcorders, but as I said earlier, they offer several improvements over their predecessors. Let's take a look at those before we wrap up this episode. Now, without getting bogged down in technical jargon, you need to know that the highest quality recording modes of the EX1R, EX3, and even the Super 35mm F3 is 35 megabits per second with 420 color. This number indicates the amount of compression being applied to the picture. All things being equal, higher numbers are better. And this number represents how much color information is being captured. 444 would mean that all the color data is being recorded, and any number less than that means that some color information is being eliminated to make the file sizes of the clips manageable. But don't be fooled by the numbers. 35 megabits per second 420 looks very good, and everything I've shot in the last few years with my EX1, EX3, and F3 for non-broadcast and broadcast productions has been with these specifications. However, some broadcasters, particularly in Europe, have proclaimed that their new minimum standard for long-form productions is 50 megabits per second with 422 color. Fortunately, all three of these new camcorders can easily meet that standard and can record Sony's high-end XDCAM HD 422 codec directly to internal memory cards with no external recorder necessary. And by the way, this is the exact same codec that is used by Sony's top-of-the-line shoulder mount cameras, such as the PDW-F800, 700, and 500. So the 100, 160, and 200 offer you the choice of shooting with the same 35 megabits per second 420 format of their predecessors, if that fits your needs better, or you can use the new 50 megabits per second XD-CAM HD 422 mode. It's your choice. An often overlooked advantage of XDCAM HD 422, besides just better picture quality, is that it also gives you four channels of audio instead of just two. Four channels can come in real handy when you want to record two different external sources on channels one and two via the XLR connectors, plus still record the camera's onboard stereo microphone on channels three and four. I've owned an F800 since 2010, and I've gotten spoiled having four channels of audio, so it's great to have this capability now available on the smaller cameras. So that's a quick look at the new PMW100, the PMW160, and the PMW200, and that brings us to the end of our first episode of xd -Cam Essentials. I hope you found this overview of the camcorders informative. We'll be digging deeper into specific features, functions, and menu settings of all the xd -Cam cameras in future videos. Until then, Happy shooting.